several months back, I upgraded my home Wi-Fi system from an aging Orbi system to this TP-Link Deco system. Got a pretty good deal on it. It's actually not bad right now for $1.99. And I must say, I've not really had like any problems with that setup. It has served me quite well, but TP-Link reached out to me a couple of days ago and said, Hey, would you like to try out something new? Would you like to try out this TP-Link BE63 system? This one supports Wi-Fi 7, and it's going to take you from like 5,800 square feet of coverage all the way up to 7,600 square feet, the fastest speeds, the best range. I said, yeah, I'll absolutely test this thing out and see what I think. So in this video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be comparing, like I said, a pretty solid system in its own right, but more on the budget side to something like this, which is very, very premium, very, very high end. And again, we're going to see, is Wi-Fi 7 all it's cracked up to be? What kind of speed are we going to be seeing on that? Now, for this testing, I'm going to be using my OnePlus Open because it's one of the few devices I have in the house that says it supports Wi-Fi 7. So let's see what kind of speeds we're able to get and where we're able to get them in the house. But let's first start off by checking out what speeds I'm currently getting with my OnePlus Open. I figured more data is better than less. So we're gonna go ahead and do the Pixel Fold and the OnePlus Open, which again, this has Wi-Fi 7, this doesn't. So we'll get to kind of see what the difference is. And you can see here, this is in the studio. This is nearest to the primary uh, router with my current Deco system. And these speeds are not bad, but I do pay for one gig, right? So I am definitely losing some speed immediately right out the gate, even though, again, I'm only like six or seven feet away from the router. So these are the current scores in the best room of the house. Let's move to the living room, which I'd say is like number two. So in the living room, we're actually right next to this satellite, excuse the fish tank noises, if you will. And the speeds have definitely dropped down a little bit. We're in the say mid 300s and then around 250 for the upload. Again, not terrible, but we're you know, sitting somewhere around a third of what we are paying for overall. Wi-Fi is always going to be slower than Ethernet, but I'm really anxious to see if this new system can go faster than this. Let's go outside all the way to the end of the yard, the furthest way I'm ever going to need to be on my Wi-Fi. Okay, so all the way out here at the end of the yard, you can see how far away we're talking. The speed has definitely cratered pretty far, 33 down, about 12 up. And on the Pixel Fold, we're looking at about 29 down and we're hovering around seven up. So definitely not great. Good enough to run the uh, surveillance camera that's all the way out here, but uh, definitely not great. So pretty simple unboxing experience. We have three power supplies and three of these routers. Any of them can act as the primary. You just plug it in, plug in your ethernet cable and off you go and then set up the other ones in your strategic locations around the house. So I've got all three of these kind of positioned where they're going to be, but I've only plugged in the primary one. I plugged into the wall and I plugged it into the ethernet cable coming from the modem. So what we're gonna do now, we've already got a network on here that's kind of confusing us. So we're gonna click on the plus button and we're gonna create a new network. Of course, this is the BE63 and we've already done all this stuff. It's super simple, it walks you through it. You're basically just plugging the stuff in and confirming that your lights are the correct color. At this point, it's gonna pop up and this is why we only plugged in one of them. Plugged in all three, you won't know which one to click on. So we're gonna click on that one and we know that that's the one over here next to me that has the ethernet cable plugged into it. So we're gonna click on that and it should directly connect to my phone here in just a moment. And we can see our connection was successful. We have found our Deco. Now this one is in the studio. So I'm gonna click on custom. We're gonna type in studio and we are done. Let's move on to the next step. Detecting internet connection type. Generally speaking, you're just gonna leave this stuff as it is and hit next. If you're not sure, you can contact your ISP, but like I said, broadly speaking, you should be okay where it is. So the next step that was blacked out there, so I'm not gonna show it to you, is actually just naming your network as well as giving it a password. Now, after that's done, it's actually gonna create another network for six gigahertz specifically. Now, this is something you can actually jump into your Wi-Fi settings in the Deco application and disable if it's something that you just don't wanna see popping up in the available networks. Keep in mind that that six gigahertz connection is what the 
nodes in your mesh, the individual routers will actually use to connect to one another. That's the one they're going to want to go to because that's the highest throughput. So rather than just disabling it, it may be worth jumping into your settings and changing it over to a dedicated backhaul because that will leave it functional, but you're not going to see it popping up in your Wi-Fi networks. Okay, so we are now up and running, and now what we can do is plug in all the other devices. I'm gonna go plug them in real quick. All right, so we are connected. We have everything here set up. My satellites were found. I went in, you can simply click on them a couple times and name them uh, whatever your appropriate name is. You can kind of keep track of everything you can see. I have 42 clients online, which is because I kept the name of the network consistent, so everything just kind of grabbed the same connection as before. So we're up and running just fine now. You can see here what is happening on the network in general, right? The, you know, some things are lightly using that network. I'm gonna jump into more and let's go to network optimization. What this is gonna do is it's gonna scan and you know, back in the day you would go in and set your channel to like one or 11 or maybe six was where you needed to be. This is gonna scan for you and find, because. The channels are, are way more complicated now than they used to be. So it's going to scan and find the right place for you to be. And you just click on optimize and it takes care of that for you straight out of the box. So now what we need to do is replicate that first series of speed tests and see what kind of difference we can manage. So once again in the studio, and this time the speeds have jumped up pretty significantly. We are getting a full 1,000 down and just shy of 1,000 up on the Pixel Fold. The OnePlus Open is getting 847 down and 779 up. Again, a pretty substantial improvement. Now moving into the living room and the Pixel Fold is maintaining over 1,000 down and 954 up. This is a really, really substantial increase over where we were before and the OnePlus Open lagging behind just slightly, but still a big improvement. 889 down, 704 up. So all the way out here at the end of the yard, you can see that we are now getting 265 down and somewhere in the 50s up. I also want to point out on the OnePlus Open that we do show Wi-Fi 7, so it is definitely connecting to it as a Wi-Fi 7 network. That is a massive, massive improvement. Well over 250 down. Again, all the way this far from the house. The, the router is on the far side of the house as well. Really, really impressive download speed and the uploads actually holding over 100 megabits down. I don't think I'm saying anything too controversial. That was a pretty darn impressive result. In each test, the speed was more than doubled from the prior test with what was a pretty good router setup. The speeds on this thing absolutely blowing my mind. I'm getting similar speeds at the end of my yard to what I was getting in my living room before. Absolutely unbelievable. Really quickly, let me show you at least one more thing that I think might be beneficial to some people. If you're like me, maybe you send files from your phone to your computer and back and forth, and it's useful for your computers to have the same IP address all the time, so you don't have to keep pointing it at different locations. You can do this on your computer, but you can also do it through the Deco app. So click on More. Let's scroll down. I believe it is under Advanced. Look for address reservation, click on that, find your device, click on it, and then click save. At that point, you can go in and set an IP address for that device to just always be, and that'll be what it'll be. Something else I would recommend doing is going into more and then going into system and then setting a reboot schedule. Just turn that on and by default it will reboot every night at 3 a.m. But you can set it to whatever time works best for you. I just find that having that on keeps everything working a little bit smoother. I did have an issue where my Wise Robot Vacuum just did not want to connect and did not want to do what it needed to do. I rebooted the system and it was working. Had this been set on from the start like it was on my old setup, that probably would never have happened. So overall, what do I think about this router setup? Let's bear in mind, this is not a cheap router setup at all. And let's be honest, most people probably don't need the three pack, right? Most people could 
maybe even get by with the one pack that's $2.99. If your house or maybe it's an apartment not too big, there is a two pack that does jump up to $5.49. And then of course the three pack that I have is very, very expensive. But again, if you are the right consumer, this is extremely impressive. I mean, this is my wise camera that is all the way at the end of my yard. And as you can see here, it has three bars of signal strength. It used to have one. It had one bar with my old setup and it would get by and it was fine. But now it's got three full bars, right? Like if you have a bunch of things like that very far away from your house, or maybe you just have a large house with multiple stories, or maybe like me, your house is quite old and the construction is such that signal really does not go through these walls very well at all. I think they're made of concrete. This might be a really good way to go in the sense that yes, it's expensive, but you buy the thing and you're probably not gonna have to touch your Wi-Fi setup for a lot of years, a really, really, really long time. This thing has kind of blown me away in terms of what I expected. I, I thought maybe I'd go from some rooms being at 400 to maybe another 600. I didn't think we we're gonna go from 400 to like a thousand. I didn't think we we're gonna be getting over 300 at the end of my yard, but here we are. This thing is very impressive. You get what you pay for. Big shout out to TP-Link for sending this over for me to check out and review. As always with my reviews, no money changed hands for the production of this video. They had no editorial input and no early copy. They will see this video at the exact same time as everyone else. I'm gonna drop an affiliate link in the description down below. If you do click that link and purchase something on Amazon, I will earn commission off of that. So keep that in mind as you go about your day. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy. Man.